Hi and welcome to another episode of Megan Things. Today we'll be modding our 3D printers to work as plotters. Right. I developed this specifically because I wanted to plot with a sharpie to be able to print PCB designs and that meant printing with my 3D printer in a way that I had not found so far on the internet. Uh, that is, I needed to be able to go from segment to segment without drawing between them and to be able to print on two sides of a raised substrate with everything lined up without screwing up my printing settings but that's going to be in an upcoming video because there's just too much stuff to cover. In this video, I'll be going over the development and setup of how I made the plotter, and I'll go over making the plotter hop between segments so that you don't get those dragging lines along the entire design. For the double-sided printing and PCB, you'll have to wait to the next video. If you go below to my Instructables link, you'll also find a written copy of the steps being covered here, as well as stuff that doesn't really convey that well in the video, such as the code and the nitty-gritty of the printer settings. Alright, let's get to it. So in order to turn my 3D printer into a plotter, you need to print three parts. So the first is the uh, holder, the second is the bracket that attaches to the printer. Now you may need to modify this if you don't have a um, printer bot simple metal or you know maybe you're lucky and there is a spot where this fits. But uh, generally speaking, um, you can use the SketchUp file I included or whatever program from the STL really. You just have to change the back here, but the front part here is uh, the one that will remain constant and uh, the spring as well that I included. So right now this is uh, measured out uh, for a Sharpie and the reason for this is because I'm actually going to be using it to plot on copper to etch, to etch PCB boards. So the first step is to split the end and I've already done this and it's fairly simple. You just take a knife to it and you want to go along with the grain. You should not rotate this when you're printing it. The ledge here should be towards the top and the open face should have the lamination so that you can cut this open easily. Spring goes hole towards the bottom in here. Sharpie goes like this. And then you've got your elastic. All I had was a super long one, but essentially just to hold the whole thing shut. Now to mount it on, you actually have to put the Sharpie in after the fact, but to mount it on, um, you've got this little adjuster here and the uh, you need also either an, a 440 screw with, an, uh, with a, a nut or just an M3 screw. I went with an M3 um, because I like the idea of not having the extra nut to fiddle with. The way this works is you figure out uh, which height you, you need it for the contact to be down so you want to set it to uh, like if it was printing and you're going to get it to uh, print in a dry run once it's at the height for printing, so it's actually about here on mine, you just have to put the screw in. So it's going to thread into both the railing and back. There you go, that's it. So I forgot to press record, but uh, anyways, I set the adjustment essentially by putting it down at the height of the uh, when it's printing the first layer, and you know, put the bracket back on there, adjusted the height until the um, sharpie was kind of just it was touching, um, but I could spring it up a little bit, but it wasn't crushing the tip either. So I really hope this doesn't screw up. It's my first test and the way I'm doing this is I've set the temperature to zero in the slicer and I've just I've removed the filament entirely. I've set the nozzle at one millimeter since that's the size of the tip of the Sharpie. Layer height at 0.2 millimeter. <laughs> All 
All right, so I started the print and now I'm gonna stop and adjust the whole setup. So as it turns out, I'm not using my regular slicer to get this plugin in, um, so I'm using Cura and rather than set up Cura to actually print properly, uh, since I'm only gonna be using it for the purpose of plotting anyways, uh, I'm just gonna adjust my plotter to the default setting in Cura. That means that if I ever have to update or reinstall or whatever, it's just gonna be way easier to deal with. Because it's just gonna be on its default settings. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So I think the takeaway from this is uh, I need to use a, a fine sharpie, but otherwise it works pretty nicely. I mean, in principle, at least the holder works. All right, so the plugin was a dud, or more likely than not, I just didn't know how to use it properly, but I did find uh, an option in the expert settings that's hop on move, and so I put that fairly aggressively, and let's see if this will work. So I just need to increase the amount of space I give uh, between the traces, which is a little bit annoying for a PCB, but it's not like this is some industrial production where you know every millimeter counts, so I'm gonna have to space them out. Oh, you offset. Fait le contraire de ce que je pensais. J'essayais de le mettre proche du, de l'autre bord. So a few mishaps there. Um, this is my original model. The threading doesn't hold that well anymore. So you know this needs a. There you go. See, this needs a nut or a new clip. All right. So this is uh, with a bolt now and uh, with a newly printed one the updated bracket as well. Oops. There you go. Much snugger fit. Well, that was it. So for now, you can find more details in my instructable links below, but next time I'll be making this a bit more complicated by lining up two prints on either side of a thicker printing substrate, along with all the extra MacGyvering that comes with that. That's for a PCB I'm making for a multi-kilowatt benchtop power supply I'll be building, so if you want to be able to follow those projects, just subscribe to my channel. Have a good day!